Without further ado, I'm going to invite a software engineer at Carbometrics, the one, the only, giving his first ever tech talk. Give it up for Anoad Bare. You got this. Hello everyone, uh, very happy to be here, a bit stressed, but I hope it will be fine. Uh, my, to my talk is about how fast refresh works in Vit. A bit about myself, I've been building Rack application for five years, mostly single page application. Last year I joined the Vit team and I've I since maintained the Rack plugins. As a full-time job, I'm working at Carbometrics, where we help financial institutions measure and reduce their uh, greenhouse gases emissions. The plan for the talk. Um, so I will first uh, speak about VIT and its architecture, present what is fast refresh, and the main goal of the talk is to uh, create with you a VIT plugin from scratch uh, to integrate fast refresh in VIT. I will speak uh, quickly about fast refresh limitation and share uh, something with you at the end uh, how we can improve that. So first, let's talk about VIT. How many people here have been using Vit? Oh, nice. Uh, Vit was created in 2020. Uh, it's, it was created by Evanu uh, with the idea to use uh, native uh, ECMAScript imports uh, to send uh, each file individually directly to the browser so that uh, we get uh, N doing that with uh, HMR or Art Reload. And this is really something like I like about Vit is that this, this is the, this new approach about development that makes it really fast and really easy to use. Uh, a year later, Vit was rewritten to be a framework uh, with a framework agnostic core and with some key features like a plugin API built on top of Rollup and out of the box support for TypeScript, GSX, PostCSS, CSS module, and others. And since then, it has become the shared tooling layer for framework authors. It's used in Astro. It's now used in, uh, in the dev server of Angular since version 16. And as announced uh, last week in uh, VitConf, uh, the Remix team is also um, working on uh, using uh, Vit for their dev server. A quick overview of the Vit architecture. Uh, so Vit is acting as a dev server, um, as a development server, and send files uh, to the browser. Uh, for TypeScript file, ESBuild is used to transpile this file. And for CSS, uh, we use PostCSS by default to, uh, to transpile, uh, to, to transpile uh, the files. Uh, since Vit 4.4, you can also switch to Lightning CSS uh, for that process. For position build, uh, the same pipeline is used, but rollup is used as, um, as to do uh, the bundling. And then the minification is done by ESBuild by default, but for CSS, you can also switch to Lightning CSS. So thanks to all these features, React works out of the box in, um, in Vit. Uh, here I have a, the starter template uh, with uh, uh, no, com no plugins for now, and our Re React app is able to render correctly uh, in the browser. And because ESBuild is used for uh, transpiling GSX, we can leverage that and have a small plugin that will inject some uh, client to, uh, the, um, to the browser in development. And when hovering uh, nodes, when I'm pressing option here, we can, uh, we can um, add, uh, uh, take DOM nodes and look at uh, linked rack nodes and see where they are in the source code. And when clicking on it, we can go back directly to the source code. This is uh, really something that I encourage you to add to your Vit application. Uh, this really uh, makes you, even when you know the code base, it's still very helpful. Um, but currently, we don't have any uh, plugin. So when I do an update of the source code, we get a full page reload. And this is not really great for development. So what we want is to add support for HMR or hot module replacement. 
To get an idea of, on how hot module replacement works, I've created, I've, I've added here. Uh, so is it? Yeah. There is three file. Um, there is three files there, to, uh, with a very small example. First, I have a runtime file with some global state uh, and some util function to create and render DOM nodes. Then I have some UI code, yet another counter, to, uh, that will uh, be uh, auto update. And finally, a um, entry point that will mount the counter into the DOM. So currently, there is no HMR capabilities, so uh, any update will trigger a full pipe reload. In Vite, the HMR API is available through import, import.meta.hot. This is only available in development, so you, we need to use an optional chaining. And we can use the accept method. Uh, in this method, we will receive the module. It can be undefined. It can be undefined if the update fails, so we will skip this case. And when the update fails, we can, uh, we can re render our uh, counter. Here, so. The module is not strongly typed, so I need to use the index signature. OK. So now I can add some state to my app and update again the UI code. And because of this method, because this method has been added to uh, the source file, it will only push the updating module through the browser, pass it here to the previous module, uh, to the previous module and this module will take care of re-rendering the UI. So uh, this is really this this is really a simple case because we have only one global state and one uh, render function that render everything, but frameworks will provide some uh, better tools to have uh, fine updates uh, in development. And this is what FastRefresh is about. FastRefresh is a development feature that um, aims to uh, update function components while preserving state. Uh, it was developed by Dan Abramov in 2019 and was initially released for uh, React Native. So, uh, the, so to integrate Fast Refresh into uh, an application, there is three building blocks. First, the client uh, that is provided uh, by um, by the React team uh, that will uh, take care of uh, that will uh, register all the components and take care of managing the uh, the updates of components and re-render them when they are updating updated. Then we need a code transformation that will uh, transform the source code to register component with uh, the client runtime. This transformation was initially developed as a Babel plugin, uh, but it's now available in SWC. And it's also uh, it has also been implemented in Bun, but this is not accessible uh, via the JavaScript API. And finally, the third piece we need to have an HMR API to integrate all that and uh, have um, the files that are fast refresh uh, uh, updated uh, independently. So let's start uh, a bit plugin and take all this knowledge to add fast refresh into it. One thing that I really love about it is how simple it is to create a plugin. You can just put a JavaScript project into your plugin list, give it a name, and you're started. Here, I'm adding the apply property to serve because this is only a development plugin. So our first building block, the client, needs to be initialized before any of the source code run. For that, we can leverage a transform index.html hook from Vite and to inject some code into uh, our, in our HTML entry point. We will use a script tag and uh, some uh, code to initialize uh, the client. Uh, well, because Vite is based on uh, ECMAX, ECMAX script import, we can directly write our code using them. But we now need to tell Vite to tell the dev server how to resolve this new React Refresh import. So this uh, resolve ID method comes from the rollup API. And with this simple line, we will just tell rollup that we will, uh, this uh, import is resolved and, uh, and that the another plugin, this plugin or another plugin will take care of loading it. And in the load method, we can uh, just uh, serve the the runtime code from the file system. 
Next building blocks is the code transformation. The goal is to take the code on the left here to the code on the right to register, to register the component um, with, uh, with the fast refresh uh, client. This uh, small line here also encodes some information about the order of the hooks, so that if the uh, order of the hooks change between updates, uh, the client will be, the component will be reset, so there is no bad state in, uh, in between. So to, to apply this code transformation, we can use the transform hook from Vit, and we will only apply this transformation for GSX and TSX file. This, this code transformation is available in SWC. This is what I'm using here. And we can enable the rec refresh transformation with the hook here. Last part, the HMR integration. We need to inject some header and some footer before and after each module uh, so that fast refresh is working. And at the end of the footer, you can see here that we are uh, so telling Vid that now this module can, uh, is able to uh, HMR and self-update. The last line is to ask the uh, refresh runtime to enqueue an update and update, re-render the updated components onto, uh, onto the app. But there is some limitation to fast refresh. So only a component uh, in Pascal case will be registered. This is a very shared convention, so normally it should be OK. And um, also, all components should be named. So you should not use uh, a name anonymous function. Uh, and this is also something that is great to always name your component, is because uh, you will see them in the React DevTools or in stack traces. The last one is really easy to break, is that a file should only export React component. This is because if because the React runtime only uh, supports updating uh, React components, if a file exports other function, this function, this export will become stale once the module has been uh, re-executed because uh, the update is not propagated to the importers. So what we can do is update our code for the accept method and uh, do a runtime check to, to see if all the exports are uh, effectively React component. In that case, we can uh, update and trigger an HMR update. Otherwise, we can use the invalidate API from Vit to, uh, to, uh, to um, continue uh, so that Vit uh, will um, trigger an update, will, uh, sorry. Uh, will inv we'll invalidate the update and uh, do uh, more uh, work to, uh, for HMR. And this can be annoying because sometimes HMR will work really fast and sometimes the HMR progression will progress to multiple files and be a bit slower. And uh, this is why I've created an OSLint rule that can be used to, uh, to uh, verify that your code is, uh, is um, validating this uh, rack refresh limitation, and so that you always have a nice and fast uh, update for your React component. So let's see all this uh, into action. So let's go back here to the application. And here, I have. So here I have all the code of the previous slide. And I've added the Vit plugin inspect to be able to see uh, the different step of the build of the Vit pipeline. Uh, this is really nice. So let's test it. Add some state to our counter. Do, do an update. and. Now we, are, we have fast refresh working into Vit. We can see uh, so what, what happens under the hood is so there is this Vit uh, pipeline. Sorry, can I use it? So first the file is loaded from the file system. Then ESBuild runs to, uh, to end, uh, and do the GSX and TSX transformation. Then the local plugin run, add some header, and the SWC have, has correctly done the uh, right refresh transformation, and uh, we have the HMR integration. 
Finally, VID does some, uh, does some update to the imports, so the imports are correct ESM imports, and the browser can parse them and ask for new files uh, to the dev server. So this is, this is great, this is working, but uh, every file is parsed both by ESBuild and by SWC. So actually, what, um, what the SWC, the VIT SWC plugin is uh, doing is level using the config hook from VIT to, um, to update the configuration. And we can, the configuration, we can disable the ESBuild hook so that now. So that now ESBuild doesn't run and SWC take care of everything. And this is fine. This has been working uh, really well for now. But uh, it's a bit, it's a bit of a shame that VIT uh, comes with ESBuild, uh, with ESBuild and a lot of support out of the box. And we need to pull a 30 megabyte uh, Rust dependency to do the fast refresh transformation. So it will be a lot better if instead of disabling ESBuild, we could ask ESBuild to do the fast refresh transformation so that we can get rid of the dependency on SWC. And now we need to update the return. The transform part will just be some string concatenation. So here, now, I have, so I have here the step or where in the ESB step I have the fast refresh transformation and the rec is just adding header. So let's add some stats, go back to the app, remove the execution point, and it works without any extra dependencies. And so currently this works on my machine, but uh, I've been working a lot uh, this week to uh, be able to uh, share that with you. And so I'm uh, ready to open a PR to ESBuild so that uh, we can, uh, I can, we can see if uh, this can be, this can learn in ESBuild. I think I'm ready to go. <laughs> so some future improvement I've been working on. Oh. No, the, sorry. The, no, the. So, yeah. So, I'm really excited about this feature because, on top of simplifying uh, the use of React with Vit, um, it enables two things in the future. Uh, it, uh, we will be able in React to have like a fast bundling with HMR support. This is uh, the Vercel team that's working a lot to do that with Turbo Pack, but I think this will be great to have this. Uh, maybe in the coming weeks or months inside, directly inside ESBuild. And uh, I think there is space for a small and fast tool build fully, uh, fully based on ESBuild uh, to have like the fast build, build system of ESBuild while having uh, HMR capabilities for React. Thanks. You got you got to give me some, give me some, give me some. That was amazing. Give it up one more time. It's incredible. How lucky.